Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Historic Challenges. And first things first, obviously we've got to check the Historic Market and see what's on there. So we've got Max Piaggi 2002, so we'll buy that. The Blue Aprilia team from 2000. And the Ducati team from 2006. Which leaves us with 13,400 diamonds. So hopefully once we've done this, difficult challenge at Australia is another two-stroke challenge as well, interestingly enough. So hopefully... Once we've done that, we'll get 15,000 for that, and we'll have 28,000 diamonds. So, we'll see, we played as Kevin Schwantz in the last episode. I think I'll play as Arbe this time, because I believe I did say I'll play as Arbe in the next one uh, that we did with 500s. So, we'll head straight into it. Phillip Island's not a particularly strong track for me, so we might struggle here. So, then Alex Crivier on pole here, with Wayne Gardner in second position. So in the last one, obviously, we saw that some of the AI did actually run into tyre troubles at Malaysia, but I feel like there shouldn't be any such issues at this circuit since it's a bit more of a, uh, well, it's a cooler climate. Even though it's in Australia, it's quite near the sea, so it's actually quite mild, apparently, around this area. That was a really good camera angle there. It's just showing a barrier. Uh, so we're playing as Arbe, of course. We're in sixth place, so let's get this started. The 500s do sound really nice, I must say. They're, they're, they're fun to ride as well. They're just very, very difficult. So I'm guessing it'll probably take us a few attempts. Obviously, of course, we can't change the fuel mixture or anything like that. So lights down, away we go. Trying to get off the line. Massive wheelie here from Arbe. So we're down into 8th place already, ninth place. So we've managed to keep it into ninth out of 13. So we've kept 4 behind us as we go into Turn 1. Doohan's corner, of course. So Doohan actually supposed to go through his own corner. Oh, Gary McCoy. Oh, Gary McCoy has caused a massive... Well, not a massive accident, but he's rammed someone at the back. Now, that was so, so strange. I thought he was carrying so much speed, but he's just took out Jeremy McWilliams there. So we're still in eight. Well, we're in eighth place now out of 13. We've got Biaggi, Roberts, and Rossi behind us. So the uh, sort of the end of the two-stroke era behind us. Around the outside of... Oh, I think it was Lawson, but we've gone off into the grass and we're down. It's on boil with McCoy then, and he just absolutely rams... McWilliams at the back and they both go skittling off into the grass. So we'll try that again. It didn't actually start too badly for us. Obviously we lost a lot of positions, but the thing has to be expected in 500s happened last time we did a uh, 500s challenge. Massive wheelie. Trying to get the power down again. Down into 10th place, 11th place. So Biaggi and Roberts Jr. got stuck behind us unfortunately there. Obviously, I don't particularly know what to do. McWilliams is obviously going quite slow, which is strange because there was actually a historic challenge last year where McWilliams was faster. We've just gone past Rossi and McWilliams and we've just rammed Kaczynski and... Uh, Yes, uh, we might need to redo that one. So hopefully the third time is the charm here. And we'll actually be able to do it. Oh, I've kind of missed the start there, actually. That's even worse for myself. Well, I'm doing a massive wheelie. I can't get the front to come down. So we're down into 11th place. I think, unfortunately, Biaggi and uh, Roberts got stuck behind us again. Oh, okay, McCoy's crashed once again. I don't know what happened to him there. He just sort of lost the front. He respawned very fast. He's already back on the bike. Which is even faster than the old respawn. The respawns have been usually pretty long this year it's uh, you respawn when your bike stops if it stops quickly like one of those weird front enders I suppose it does respawn you almost instantly so we've got past Rossi here so we actually seem to have a good amount of straight line speed oh we've caused a crash we've had Lawson that, we've had Lawson off again I'm sure we had him off in the last episode it's going so slow in the middle of the track I just clipped him and had him off massive wheelie there so behind McWilliams now We've got plenty of time to try and make our way through the pack. Massive wheelie there. So we're closing on McWilliams again. We're going to go around the outside of him. I don't think we'll be able to actually... Oh, we actually have done it. Oh, Rossi's going pretty slow. You would assume Rossi would be one of the faster AI because obviously... He won, uh, he won the title at the end of the 500 era, but I suppose he was very new to it and most of the other guys raced f for many years in it. We're closing up to Rossi at the inside. We go into the last corner. So we've got some serious drive there. Just absolutely blasted past Rossi. for saying he's on a Honda as well. But I think he's probably going to come back past us on the straight. So Gardner, Doohan and Rainey really got away at the front. Schwantz, Crivier and Kaczynski in front of us. Kaczynski's having a look at the inside of Schwantz, I think. Oh, well, it's actually the inside of Crivier, I believe. Yeah, Crivier got past by both of them. And I've just rammed Crivier out the way as well. They go so slow into the southern loop, actually caught me out. So I've actually lost the position again to Kaczynski, although we're back in front of him now. Kevin Schwantz looking back at us. Close up to Kevin Schwantz through the stoner corner, a bit like what we did to Lawson last time we passed him, hitting the brakes for the Honda hairpin. Well, it's just called turn four now, I suppose. We've ran really wide. Um, great. 
So I need to really, really stop having contact with the other guys. It's so difficult to ride these 500s. I, I found it much easier at Malaysia, it must be said. Probably because it's just a track I like and I'm quite good at. Compared to, obviously, Phillip Island where... Yeah, I mean, I'm not, not a massive fan of it, I'll say it. I know people will hate me for it. In real life, it's perfectly fine. Makes for some good racing, but on the game, I'm not really a fan. If I got the option of this and most of the other tracks, I probably wouldn't pick this one. Uh, tenth place now. <laughs> McWilliams back in front of us. We're going to get past, past him. We've really got some closing speed on Lawson again. Lawson goes so slow through the stoner corner, and it's a bit dangerous. I think that's why we hit him before. So we break for the Honda hairpin. See, I thought I was going to slow down plenty there, but I've still gone in a bit wide. We're back up into 7th, back up into 6th. We're going to pass a Crivier up into 5th here. Uh, Dewan's trying to get on the outside of Rainey, but it looks like Gardner's leading the race right now. So up into 5th place behind Gary McCoy. Oh, Dewan's gone very wide there. Up the inside of McCoy into the last corner. We've passed Gary McCoy then up into fourth place. Now Mick Dewan's up next. He's looking back at us. And you can see Norik Abe forcing his way through up into fifth place. So we go into turn one then. Oh, Dewan's looking for a move around the outside of Rainey. That's a pretty brave corner to go for a move, especially when the other rider's on the curb on the inside. They are very likely to crash. And I've just crashed into Rainey. And uh, luckily he's not actually gone off the track, so he stayed on, but... Uh, bit of a mistake on my part there, but he's still fourth, he's still behind us, so we'll just keep going. I struggle so much with these bikes, I don't want to give anybody an advantage, even though it was obviously the right, it would be the right thing to do to let him back through. So we're about to start the third lap, and we've got a pretty good run on doing here in the slipstream, and we're going to go past him as we go towards his corner, actually, 130.0 from myself there. We've gone past him in his corner, but we've gone wide, he's going to come straight back through, yes he is. Perhaps I should just sit behind him while he catches up to Gardner. So Dewan's all over the back of Gardner now. We've both caught up to him. And he's looking for a way around him. I'm probably going to try and pass them both at the same time if I can. Although I've just messed up MG massively. Oh, the rear is spinning. See, that is the thing about these bikes. It does. The rear does kick out. Look, look at the fuel. We've got 23 laps of fuel. And uh, Dewan's actually lost a little bit of ground to Gardner now. And I've lost a bit of ground to both of them. If you look on the map, we've left McCoy behind by a massive margin. I'm now four tenths behind doing. He's going for the move on Gardner. He's got past Gardner, so we're probably going to have to follow him through to try and keep up with him. Around the outside, up the inside of Gardner, we go on the curb, on the curb. That's a dangerous move. I think I'm probably not going to quite pull that off. He's going to come back at us. Yes, he is on the Rothmans Honda there. Or just racing Honda, as it's called in this game, I suppose. We're up into second once again there. We got back past him, so we've got to try and hunt down the other Australian now off Mick Dewan for the lead. There's a crash behind. Eddie Lawson's gone down. Quite what's happened to him, I'm not sure, but he's now down into last place. Look behind McWilliams. So I suppose that's what you'd expect after a crash. I wonder what happened to him. But we've closed back up to doing quite a bit. Obviously, we were four tenths behind him at the start of the lap. Looks like we're a lot closer than that now. So 30.0 again. So another fastest lap, and we're going to go for another move on him into his corner. Obviously, last time that didn't go too well, and again, it's not gone too well. Look how much we've left Gardner behind already. We have so much more pace than him. Doan looking back at us here through Lukey Heights. Pretty bad call. To be honest, they lose a lot of time through that section of the track. Uh, the start of the lap, they're not too bad, but to be honest, through the sort of hay shed section all the way up through Lukey Heights, they lose a lot of time. Then they lose a lot of time here as well, so perhaps we will go for the dive into the last corner of them on the wrong side of him, really, for that. And he's, he actually closed that off pretty well. Uh, most of the other ones have left the door quite open for me to do that. Are we going to be close enough to go for it? I don't think so, no. He's going to just hold us off through the first corner. But we could have an attack into the southern loop, although that's where I've been struggling quite a bit. And then obviously you then get to Stoner's corner again, where we're in the same position as last lap, really, where we're close enough to maybe have a pop, but I don't think we'll be able to then also get it stopped for the Honda hairpin. Although we are a little closer than we were before, I think. We go through Stoner's corner, try to go around the outside towards the curb. Oh, almost crashed on the curb there. Mick Dewan's actually doing a pretty good job to keep us behind, considering how much quicker we are than him. Here's the section where they lose a massive amount of time. You see, why does he go so wide through there? It makes him have to go so tight through turn 8 then. So he loses quite a bit of time through there. Then on Lukey Heights, they get on the power too much, and the rear comes around. You can see he almost crashes. In fact, that's probably where uh, Lawson high-sided, actually. That's probably where he crashed at the top of Lukey Heights, just getting on the power. 
And I wouldn't be surprised if Doohan does the same later on in the race. But we're going around the outside. We're going on the inside now. He's gone a bit wide through turn 11. Side by side with Mick Doohan. Here we go. We've got the lead. Now as we go towards the final corner on lap 6. We've gone a bit hot though. He's gone back underneath us. But we've got the run on Doohan. Here we go. So we're coming up towards the line then. We've got back in front of Doohan once again. As we go over the line. With 30.3 there, we've got a tenth over him, but he's going to be right behind us. We go through Doohan Corner. Am I going to lose the position back to McDoohan again? Hitting the brakes for the Honda Hairpin. Oh, the race kicked out. Doohan Dewan just hit us, hit us wide at the Honda Hairpin. Wow, McDoohan, a pretty dirty, aggressive move there. And he's left himself two laps and probably the win there. So as we start the last lap then, Doohan's 1.7 seconds in front. I think he's got the win. I'd been very, very fair with him up until that point, and he's just absolutely ran me off, and uh, then I've not actually had the tyre to be able to catch back up to him. So then Mick Doohan's going to win the historic challenge with, well, in very, very basically cheating standards, uh, just ramming me off at the Honda Hairpin. So yeah, we actually had very, very similar pace. It was just a shame that that's how it had to end, obviously doing absolutely ramming us off there. Uh, only getting 12,000 diamonds, which isn't too bad. So I'll have a look at a couple of incidents as well now. So this is on board with Lawson then, and yep, exactly what I thought. Rear comes round on him at Lucky Eyes, he gets on the gas and flying into the gravel there. Here comes McDoohan, up the inside, bam, just rams us off. Uses me as a brake actually, to be honest, and then just powers out the corner and off he goes. So if we look at it slow down, I'd lost the rear. Doohan just comes steaming in, smacks me again. You can see how much of an impact that was, judging by his rider's animation. That's just sent me off the track entirely and actually it's gone the grass to come back on because I didn't have enough of a turn in to just keep on the tarmac. So we gained our 12,000 diamonds which brings us up to 25,400 and now on the market then we've got an uncommon Valentino Rossi so we'll buy that first. Obviously we can afford everything here, the uh, 2000 Valentino Rossi will buy him as well and the 2003 movie star Honda team which takes us down to 18,900 diamonds. So that is it then for this video, I hope you have enjoyed that one, obviously Mick doing getting a bit dirty. If you have a look at the riders and teams, we've got 20 of 41 riders and 18 of 36 teams, so we are pretty much halfway through. We are halfway through with the teams. We're one off. In fact, actually, there is no half of 41, is there? So, yeah, I'd say we're halfway through the series now. But yeah, I'm a bit disappointed to have lost to doing like that. Obviously, he uh, hit us off, because I've been very fair with him. I could have easily just hit him off the racing line and gone through and won, but uh, I didn't want to do that, obviously. But these things, they, they happen quite often with AI and you just have to get over them. So like I said, I hope you did enjoy that one. I hope you enjoyed the rest of your day. I hope you're staying safe and I shall see you in the next video.